Hello, what is up guys? Evil Do Asylum here today, back with another Black Desert video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the hunting life skill in the game, going over like how to get started, what is hunting, what are the best places to do hunting, how do you make the most money from hunting, how do you hunt in general, all those different questions um, that you could have with the hunting life skill, hopefully we'll answer them for you here. As is with most of my guides, it's specifically targeted towards a newer player who's trying to get into the life skill, but if you are a bit more advanced, you'll probably learn some stuff from this too, because I'm covering a ton of stuff here. There's timestamps down below, you can use them to navigate wherever you need to go. And quickly before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you've been watching videos on my channel and still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. Helps to grow my channel, you stay up to date with new content, and we both win. And without further ado, let's get into it and let's start off with like, what exactly is hunting? So hunting is a life skill in Black Desert that basically involves killing specific monsters in specific ways and then butchering them for specific rewards. Very vague answer, I know. There's a ton of different ways to do hunting and a ton of different methods of hunting, but this video in particular is only going to cover hunting terrestrial based monsters using a matchlock rifle. This specific type of hunting is one of the best money makers in the entire game. When you get up to the higher tiers of it, you can pretty easily net over 500 million silver per hour. That being said, there's a good amount of build up to get to that point, so don't think you're just flipping a switch like you would if you were doing something like grinding. Not everything in this game is like centaurs where you can sit there picking your nose and poking things with a stick and make 6 trillion silver per hour. Now while it is one of the better money makers as far as life skilling goes, it does have its downsides, with the biggest one being that there's certain things that you simply cannot get from hunting that you could get from gathering. The biggest one off the top of my head is going to be scorpion and snake meat used in Valencia meals. So you might still have to supplement some gathering along with your cooking. Um, but for the most part, it's a really, really efficient way and a lot better than gathering in general for most types of things that you're trying to gather. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started with going over what you're going to need. And the first thing you're going to want to do is get your mastery up to 400 mastery for hunting. So you can see my mastery right here is at 1027. This can be viewed on the player menu, which is on the P key on the keyboard, life skill tab, which is the little fish with a pickaxe sticking out of its head. So if this is your first time doing life skilling in general and you have no idea what mastery is, it's basically your gear score equivalent. So how you have AP and DP for your main combat gear, you have mastery for life skill gear. Mastery is improved by wearing various types of life skill gear, so like these Manos accessories or this cooking clothes that I have on. Different gear gives you bonuses to your mastery, as well as leveling up the life skill itself will also provide you mastery score when you level it. Essentially, the higher your mastery score is, the better you're going to perform when you perform any of those given life skills. As you can see, each life skill has its own independent score that you have to level up separately or purchase separate equipment for, the only exception being accessories that apply to every single life skill on your kit. But this video is about hunting, and the reason you want to get 400 mastery to start with on hunting is because, as you can see in the middle of the little pop-up there, Different scores for hunting mastery allow you to use different weapons. And by hitting mastery level 400, you can use the Artisan Matchlock. The Artisan Matchlock is the best matchlock that you can use in the game until you reach Artisan 10 hunting, at which point you switch weapons. But by hitting mastery level 400, you can use that, and it'll make your life so much easier in these early stages. Now, if you're brand new to hunting, you're going to be level beginner 1, so you're not going to have any mastery at all, and you're going to need to buy some gear to get to that point. Mastery gear is pretty straightforward in Black Desert. There's basically three tiers of accessory and three tiers of clothes. With some skills such as the gathering skill having an additional tool slot as well for a third piece of gear. But all of these gear pieces have three tiers. In the accessory tiers, it's going to be Logia. So we have Logia necklace, earring, ring, and belt. Jeranoa, necklace, earring, ring, and belt. And Manos, necklace, earring, ring, and belt. On the clothing side, since this is a hunting video, they are hunter's clothes. And you can see that we have Logias, Robio, and Manos hunter's clothes. If I just click on, say, these Logia hunter clothes here and hover over, say, this Tet one, you can see down near the bottom, pretty darn close to my webcam actually, that it has hunting mastery plus 200. So this piece of clothing will give you 200 mastery additional on top of whatever your score is. If I go to something like the Logia ring, click on that one and head over to the Tet stage of that one, hover over it, you can see that this provides all life skill mastery 32. So that'll give you plus 32 to every single one of your life skills on your character, not just hunting. So again, accessories are universal, clothing is specific to the thing. In the case of hunting, you're going to want to get a hunter's clothes as well as an accessory set. Now, if you're looking for the cheapest way to hit that 400 mastery at the start without having to do any leveling of the life skill, that's going to be by buying two Tetlogia rings, two Tetlogia earrings, a Tetlogia necklace right here, and a Tetlogia belt. Putting those six accessories into your six accessory slots will net you 208 mastery, and then you'll need to buy a Tetlogia hunter's clothes to push yourself over the top 
with an additional 200 mastery taking you to 408. On the NA marketplace, those purchases are going to set you back about two and a half billion silver to get started at that point. Now, I'm not stupid. I know that that's a huge number for a new player to even consider. So I've got a few different options that are a bit cheaper here. So you have to remember the only reason we're going for that level of mastery here at the start is to be able to use the Artisan Matchlock. The Artisan Matchlock is the best in slot, but if you're okay with using one that does a little bit less damage, you can get by a lot cheaper to start off with. So you can see there's also a Professional Matchlock, Skilled Matchlock, and Apprentice Matchlock. As far as damage differences, the Professional does about 12% less damage, the Skilled about 25%, and the Apprentice about 33% less damage. So if you're okay with living with that little bit of a reduction in damage while you level up your hunting life skill and use the built-in mastery from leveling up the skill to reach that 400 mastery level, a couple of different options for you can involve different combinations of duo Logia accessories instead, which on the NA marketplace are only 14 million silver, so a full set of these would only be 84 million silver, and that same Tet Logia's Hunter's Clothes for that 200 mastery. So I made a little spreadsheet here which summarizes basically what I just said, but instead of using the Tetlogia Tetlogia setup for 2.5 billion silver to get that 100% damage out of the Artisan, you can do reduced damage using these different combinations. So a Tetlogia and Dual Logia accessories for a total of 500 million silver for 88% damage. Or you could just buy the Tetlogia armor and save another 80 something million silver to get a 75% damage. Or if you really don't have a lot of money to spend and you just want to get started, a set of dual logging accessories plus an apprentice matchlock is only going to set you back 85 million silver. As far as the life skill gear goes, all of these rifles are about 150 million silver on the marketplace. So do factor that in. You'll need 150 million for each of these different rifles on top of this cost. So if you want to pause the video here to help you decide which one you're going to go for, feel free, but I'm going to keep going. Now once you've decided how much money you want to spend on the life skill gear itself, you do need to buy a matchlock that corresponds to your level. So for that, just type in matchlock into the search market here, and there should be ones in stock at the plus 10 ranking. Only buy these at plus 10. So whichever tier you're going to be in, depending on your mastery, just buy the one that's at plus 10. Save yourself a lot of struggle. They range from 120 to 150 million at least on the NA marketplace. Again, I want to stress, if you pick one of the lower points of entry for this, as you level up your hunting life skill, you are going to gain mastery, and as your mastery hits these different thresholds, you can upgrade your rifle at each of those points. Don't feel like you're picking something and are getting locked into it. You are going to level up your hunting level, which will give you more mastery and allow you to use a better match lock. So the choice is yours as far as how much money you want to put in, or if you have some leftover life skill gear to begin with getting into this, uh, any combination thereof works. Now, if you already are a major life skiller and you have a ton of life skill stuff saved up, the goal for you should be hitting at least 901 mastery for hunting, so 901. The reason being, again, on the same hovered pop-up, at hunting mastery 901, very bottom of this little pop-up, you have the ability to drop high-grade loot. So you can't get high-grade loot from hunting until you hit 901 mastery. So the sooner you hit that, the better, and that should be your goal as you continue to progress to hit that 901 level, and then from there on, obviously continuing to add more and more mastery because that'll improve your overall drop. But 901 should be that target if you're a more like intermediate, more advanced sort of life skiller. Now the final actual piece of gear that you're going to need is going to be a butcher knife. If you already do gathering, you can use your gathering butcher knife, so your logia, your manos, whatever you're using. If this is going to be your first time, you want to make sure you buy a butcher knife that can be repaired. It does not matter the tier or whatever it is, it just has to be one that can get repaired. The easiest one for that is going to be to like find a Logia Butcher Knife. Currently not on the NA Marketplace, but you could also just go to the NPC Zyra, who's located in Velia, right here, near the uh, bottom of the city, and she sells you those various items. So we can buy a Logia Butcher Knife from her, which is at a base level, and then ram some black stones into it to bump up that durability from 50 if we want. So pretty cheap to get in there. Also, if you are looking for accessories to start with and you want to try your hand at upgrading, she does sell Logi accessories as well as the second tier Jaron Noah accessories. But this NPC right here, Zyra. All right, so that's it as far as like absolutely mandatory gear to get started with hunting. Now let's talk about some nice to haves. And the first one is going to be artifacts. Very rarely in an evil do us harm guide will I tell you what to do. I usually keep it pretty open, but this time I'm going to tell you what to do. The Lightstone set that you want to get for your set is the Canine set. The Canine Tooth set, as viewed here on Garmoth, involves the Trap Stone, the Track Stone, the Claw Stone, and the Iridescent Lightstone. This set provides you so much value, I think it's almost impossible to not pick this one. It provides you Crit Chance, EXP, Attack Speed, Critical Level, Mastery, everything you could want from hunting is in this set. 
As far as the actual artifacts to put them in, I would recommend putting it into some hunting mastery ones, which you will eventually get while you do your hunting. I mean, I think I have like 10 of these just piled up. There's four hunting mastery ones piled up, two hunting EXPs, I got seven life skill mastery ones. They just pile up after a while from hunting. So if you don't want to buy this right away and you want to wait until you drop some of these artifacts, go ahead and wait. But that's the one you're going to want to pick. That's your setup for artifacts. The other two things that are really nice to have are going to be one, the hedgehog pet, because it gives you additional loot while you're out doing your gathering from hunting. It's almost broken in hunting, honestly, as well as a tent. You can use the tent from the quest line or you can use the pearl tent but these allow you to remote repair, and remote repair makes your life so much easier while you're hunting. This guy's gonna talk about a couple places that you can go that have repair locations close by if you don't have a tent, but really, like, huge, huge quality of life improvement. All right, so we spent 10 minutes talking about gear, let's move on to something else, and this time we're gonna talk about class selection. So unless you're trying to be like an absolute min-maxer, it doesn't matter a ton, but if you are trying for some convenience or better classes, there are some classes that are just straight up factually better at hunting. That's because they have better class passives that apply to the hunting skill. You're basically looking for any class that has attack speed, crit related passives, or DP bonuses. Attack speed will improve your overall DPS, crit chance or crit damage will improve your damage while you're out hunting physically, and DP will allow your character to survive more mobs attacking it at a given time, making your life a lot easier when you're out hunting. So for example, my Musa that I play in Succession has 10% crit chance built in on Wanderer's Blade and 5% on Force of the Sword for a total of 15% bonus crit chance. This does get applied to my hunting skill. Other classes that have really, really strong passives. This is not an exhaustive list, but just a couple of ones that pop into my mind off of classes that I've played before. Guardian has 10% crit chance on Succession as well as 10% crit damage. Kunoichi has a 10% attack speed buff, as well as a 5% crit chance buff. And I think Mystic Succession has got to be like the god tier one with a 2% attack speed buff, 20% crit chance buff, and 20 defense power into it. It's absolutely mental across the board buffs. Like if you're trying to min-max, I feel like that's got to be the class. Of course, I could be wrong. Somebody will yell at me in the comment section saying I forgot one. This isn't an exhaustive list. I want to say it. These are just some that pop into my mind off of classes I've played before. So look at your class, look at some of your favorite characters, look at your life skiller, and see if you have any passives that apply either crit, attack speed, or defense power. One more thing to consider, if you are making a new character for hunting, or if you're going to use an alt and you want to change the appearance of that character, a taller character performs better at hunting. Don't ask me why, it just does. If I wasn't so concerned with my character looking exactly like me, I would, uh, I would change that. Now with class selection and setup and all that out of the way, let's talk about some sort of stat interactions with hunting. As you've probably already guessed, class passives do apply to your hunting stats. So like we said, critical, attack speed, and DP related stats, super useful. Now in addition to class passives, your battle stat points will also apply. So by reaching attack speed level 5, you'll get an additional 20% attack speed, and reaching critical hit level 5, you'll get 18% crit chance. This will directly get added to any of your class passives, and generally speaking, improve your overall attempts at hunting. Now, if you remember a second ago, I recommended the canine artifact set. If I swap that one on over, you'll remember that it applies an 8% critical hit rate, as well as two points into attack speed and two points into critical hit. So all you need to max both of those out is an elixir of strong shock, which will give you critical hit plus three, and the elixir of flowing wind, which will give you attack speed plus three. Now you're also gonna wanna hit gathering level five to improve the time for butchering after you kill the mobs. And the easiest way to do that is join any guild that has the gathering plus three bonus of nimble fingers and pop a seafood crown meal, which will give you gathering plus two. Now, if you're not in a guild or don't wanna join a guild, you could use a skilled workers elixir for gathering speed plus three instead. Do note that you'll probably wanna put all these elixirs on your hot bars, that way you can activate them while you're hunting and you don't miss any of their cooldowns. I also wanna stress that this is pretty far on the min maxi side as far as hunting goes. If you just wanna like get out there and try hunting, you really don't need to worry about all these different elixirs. You can just throw on a simple crown meal that gives you plus two, plus two, and eat the 15% longer gathering time if you're already in a guild. So that would drop you off at attack speed four, critical hit four, and gathering three. But it has way less things to keep track of and is a pretty casual way to just to get started. Of course, that's assuming you're using the canine's tooth artifact set as well. Okay, I think we've spent enough time with setup here. Let's get into actually doing some things. And let's start off with quests. First things first, on the O menu to bring up your quests, Suggested tab, I'm gonna uncheck Hide Completed so I can show you it, but under the Life tab, you are looking for the quest line, Dreaming of a Better Hunt. 
you are going to want to complete this quest line. It unlocks a lot of cool moves that you can do during hunting, as well as some other daily quests that you can perform while you're out hunting. You don't have to do this quest right away, just remember to come back to it at some point and complete it. It's life dreaming of a better hunt. One quest that you should take every day, though, is obtained from the NPC Liana. You can use the Find NPC function to find her, to find whichever one is closest to you, and she has two quests. There is a weekly quest under the main quest tab that involves hunting, looking for fire horns, and she also has a daily quest depending on which region you plan to hunt in, either Camisylvia, Narcion, or the Mountain of Eternal Winter. Make sure to accept these quests every single day when you head out. Also, if you complete the Dreaming of a Better Hunt quest line, you will have three additional quests that you can take every day at the Narcion node down in this little castle thing. Now, as far as actually leveling up your hunting life skill, there are a lot of viable areas in the game nowadays. A lot has changed since back in the day when Featherwolves was the only viable place to go. And don't get me wrong, Featherwolves is still a really solid area if you're trying to level up, but there's a lot better areas, at least in my opinion these days, to power level your hunting skill. So I'm going to run you through a bunch of different options, and I am going to start with the old tried and true, which is Featherwolves, located out here in the Camisilvia region. Now the Featherwolves do have a lot of things going for it, first thing being that it's not too far away from the H or guard post. So if you do need to repair your gear and you don't have a tent, it's not that long of a horse ride back and forth to get those repairs done. As an added bonus, it still generates decent income while you're out levelings from all the wolf meat that you can gain from it. But if you are new and you don't really know what you're doing or you don't have enough defense, you do have a pretty solid chance of dying if you get overwhelmed by these things. It might not be the best if you're super new, but still, it's a really solid place when you're first starting out because you don't need the full artisan matchlock to perform okay here. So I'd urge you, if you were just starting out going here, just be cautious about how many mobs you pull at any given time. As you get more comfortable with hunting, you can start pulling more and more and doing more damage and gaining more EXP per unit time. Now moving on to what I believe to be the currently best EXP per unit time in the game as far as hunting goes, we're going to look at the Grass Rhinos, just north of the Narcion node in Odalita. Despite their size and name, they really don't hit too hard, and they also don't aggro on sight, so you can just fight them one at a time until you get more used to how hunting works, and then start adding more and more into your rotation, that way you can get more EXP per unit time. If you don't have a tent for repairs, there is a stable keeper at the Narxian node, so you don't have to travel very far for repairs. However, on the downside, these things are absolute tanks, and they're going to take many shots to take down. You're going to want to aim for back attacks, and again, make sure you have as high critical stat as you can get. Because of how tanky they are, I wouldn't even recommend coming here until I could use the Artisan Matchlock. Yes, you can do it sooner, but it just won't be very fun. Also, later on, when you unlock the Master Matchlock, your life will become a lot easier here. So when you're power leveling through all the master ranks on your way up to Guru, this is going to be a great spot for you. Now a third and kind of sleeper spot is in the Mountain of Eternal Winter. This is next to Isleton, and there are these little like huntable goat looking things. I don't know what else to call them, mainly because I can't pronounce the word that they are. They do not aggro until you attack, just like the rhinos, but they do award less EXP than the rhinos. However, they have a way simpler attack pattern. You can see that they just run up to you and stand in front of you. So you don't have to switch your aim like you saw me doing with the rhinos. You can kind of just stand there and hold down the left click button. Super easy, and they still give you a decent chunk of EXP. On top of this, they also do very little damage, making them sort of like a beginner's version of the rhinos when you're starting out if you're working on your way up to the artisan matchlock. The downside is that this spot is very tiny and there's only enough room for one person, and realistically there isn't enough room for one person because you're going to overclear this area. So after this video comes out and everybody rushes to the spot, don't get mad at me. You might have to wait a few days. Also, if you don't have a tent, there's not a really conveniently located place for repairs other than the city of Isleton itself. All right, so you picked out where you want to get started with your hunting journey. Now let's talk about actually hunting and all the buttons and how to actually do it. So to get started, go ahead and equip all of your gear as well as the matchlock by placing it from your inventory and putting it on. Then, to actually get started with shooting stuff, you're going to need to right-click to reload. That'll play the reload animation. And then if you point at any target with your left mouse button, you'll see you get a little crosshair. And you can shoot by pressing the left mouse button. You can save up to three shots by default, which is located on this little icon in the bottom corner. After you shoot three times, so if I just shoot into the air until that ammo hits zero, you'll need to reload, which once again is the right mouse button to reload. If you press the Q key on the keyboard, you will crouch. And then it has a faster reload animation that you can see right there when you go to reload after crouching. If you complete the hunting quest line that I recommended earlier, you'll have a few other abilities that you can do. First things first is that if you are sprinting forward and left click, you'll do a sliding shot. Secondly, if you use up all of your ammo and are sitting on zero ammo, 
and do a side roll, which is shift A, you will reload one bullet. You have to be out of ammo for that to work. It doesn't reload a bullet all the time. So you can shift A or shift D to reload one bullet when you're empty on ammo. So you can use that if you need to like get a final, finish finaling shot off on something. Bad English right there, but you know what I mean. So that's why I said it's pretty important to make sure you do that quest line at some point. It unlocks two really powerful abilities. Do know that when you crouch, your field of view is limited. You can only go so far left to right versus when you're standing, you have total aim. Now, more mechanics wise, your matchlock has a durability gauge. You can see mine's at like 108. I can't really read that font, but 108 out of 150. So I have 108 shots left with my matchlock. Every time you hit a shot, it's gonna drop by one. And you, after it reaches zero, you're gonna have to repair it either at a stable keeper or with your tent. Your butcher knife that you have equipped also has some level of durability. So make sure that this doesn't break either while you're out gathering. Although it should wear at a slower rate than your matchlock does. Now as far as some more advanced tips here, if you press the escape key on the keyboard, go to the settings menu, interface settings, mouse interface, and hit use mouse to move, you can now press the control key at any time on the keyboard to bring up the mouse cursor. This is basically aimbot, it's like cheating. So like here, I'm facing backwards, right? I'm facing this way, there's a deer over there. If I control to bring up the little cursor and left click on that deer, the guy makes a full 180 and tracks the target and continues shooting it until it's dead. It's practically cheating. Then there's another one over there, bang. You can also use this to bypass the restriction from crouching. So you can see there's a deer over here, but I can't turn any further to the left. If I use the control button and click on the deer, my character will aimbot even though he can't even aim that way. It's literally like cheating. You're gonna wanna get used to using it. Another fun one is that you can reload while sprinting. So normally when you go to reload, you can only walk. But if you press the shift key, Tap the right mouse button and then hit W, your character will run and reload instead. So again, that's hold shift, tap right click, and then press W. You'll have to mess around with it for a little bit, but eventually you'll get it. Again, it's hold shift, tap right, and then W. Like tap it, let go of it, and then hit W. It's slower than you think it's gonna be. One final thing to talk about as far as advanced skills is gonna be the Black Spirit's Rage. You have a Black Spirit's Rage skill when you're hunting, and that is this 100% meter up here underneath my health bar. What this can be used for is to fire like a shotgun blast into a bunch of mobs. What I like to do with this when I'm hunting is group a bunch of stuff together by aggroing it all on top of you. So we got a bunch of guys that are all gonna chase me now. I'm gonna drag them off here into like a straight line, and I'm gonna roll behind them and press F to use the Black Spirit's shot. So again, that is the F key on the keyboard. And now I'm just gonna finish off the rest of them with the one or two shots that it'll take. Now at some point you're gonna reach Artisan 10 Hunting, which is the point where you can equip the Master Matchlock. You immediately want to stop whatever you're doing and go and get this weapon. It's pretty well in stock nowadays on the marketplace. So there's 15 of them here on the NA server. You'll probably have to buy it at the base version and you're probably gonna have to upgrade it yourself up to the plus 10 state. But it is so important to get that thing to plus 10. First and foremost, it does more damage than your artisan matchlock that you've been using. Pretty straightforward. But in my mind, the more important part is that this thing has 150 durability instead of 100 durability. That means you can stay out hunting 50% longer before you have to repair. I'd also immediately recommend putting a brand stone on this thing. A brand stone increases the durability essentially by another 50%, which means you'll have over double the amount of time out hunting compared to when you were using the artisan matchlock. It's a huge quality of life improvement. Brandstones are given out time from time from login rewards, so you might have some sitting in your storage if you've been playing for a while. If you don't have any, there's the progression pass at the top of your screen. And in the punting and butchering section, for completing 16 of these challenges, which you've probably completed a bunch of because you've been hunting now, you'll receive an item brand spellstone. So work through completing some of these challenges here to unlock that if you don't already have some in your inventory somewhere. And after getting that matchlock at Artisan 10, you won't have another upgrade to your character until you reach Guru 1 Hunting. And in Guru 1 Hunting, you unlock a fourth bullet in your magazine, which again, huge quality of life improvement, less time spent reloading, more time spent hunting. And once you finally hit that Guru 1 stage, this is when you wanna start thinking about actually making a lot of money off of this life skill. And there's a lot of different viable places to grind hunting for money, and some of them are ones we've already sat at here. So I believe the top two earners in the game right now are going to be the Verdir Doe and Buck that are located over here by Salinor Pond and also throughout the entire region of the Narcan. 
which I think I've said a different way every single time, so I've got to be right one of these times. I know for me personally, this is my highest income one in the game. In Tied with the Deer is going to be the Wolves, the Frost Wolves located in the Isleton region, down here by the Shrine of Silent Prayers, right in this region. There's a bunch of wolves as well as some bears. Um, probably those two locations, the Doe Bucks as well as these, are going to be the highest earners in the game. Stepping it down a bit are going to be the Shadow Wolves, which again are located in the Snarkhound node. There's two spots. There's one spot like roughly around this area on the map as well as down in this area. Both of those are pretty solid earners. In my mind, third place is probably going to fall to the Grass Rhinos that we're hunting right now for EXP or where I was just hunting a second ago. And if you're looking specifically for lion meat for your various cookings like Valencia meals, there are Shadow Lions located in the Narsian node, as well as a Shadow Lion rotation by this singular pond over here to the um, upper left of the town of Arihaza in the desert. So this pond right here has a rotation around it as well. So those are all the viable spots for money. There's other stuff that you can hunt for money as well, but those are probably your biggest earners in the game right now. Now there's one thing left that I haven't covered, and it's all this random crap that drops while you're out hunting. So all of these tusks, horns, hides, whole leathers, all these sorts of things, can be used at a crafting workshop, the handcraft workshop, to make trade goods. I have a full-on guide about how trading works in this game, and it's like 45 minutes long, something like that. I'm not putting it in this video. You can watch it separately. The TLDR is you make stuff over here in Grana, you send it to Valencia City, you pick up a buff over here, and you get like four times the value of the item. Save up a bunch of these, ship them all over at once, connect a bunch of nodes, cash in like maybe once a year. You also have a chance to drop some stuffed items from these various mobs, and these can be crafted with processing, which is the L key on the keyboard, manufacturing, and you can see a bunch of different recipes for all of these different heads. So like artisan stuffed verdure buck would require the stuffed verdure buck plus 30 damaged hides plus a fire horn. So there's different crafting recipes for all of these different things that you can make. You can then put them in your house or sell them on the central marketplace. But anyway, guys, that's basically the hunting life skill. There's a ton of stuff. I know this is a longer video as well, but again, timestamps navigate to whatever information you need. Generally speaking, as far as continued progression, keep hunting things, keep making money, continue to buy more mastery, get better drops, rinse and repeat the process. If this video is going to help you out here in Black Desert, do let me know in the comment section below. If you think I got something wrong, you know, feel free to leave that down there below as well. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you at the next YouTube video right here, the next live stream over on Twitch every Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, or wherever I happen to see you. Thanks.